In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a complete image of the system drive on your computer, uh, which would include all your software, your preferences, your data, everything on that drive, um, using Drive Image XML. All right, it's uh, it's free software for personal use. There is a um, a corporate version for business use. Uh, if you go to runtime.org, uh, you can you can download either copy. Right, and um, basically, I've already done that point or that part, I should say. And uh, you know, you can go ahead and do that for yourself. I'm going to close that window there and go to the copy of the uh, commercial product that I have on my desktop. All right, and uh, the functionality between the free and the commercial is um, very much identical, so everything will work the same. All right, so. Let's double click on the installation icon and confirm that we want to run it. Okay, and you get your welcome here. You can click next to that. You want to uh, read and agree, uh, if you do, to the license agreement. Click on next. Uh, note that uh, under your um, start button in the program group, uh, it will be under runtime software is where you will find it. Okay, so uh, it's not going to be it's not going to say drive image XML right away. You're going to have to go into the runtime software folder. I'll show you that later. I'll click next, next again, and once more. There we go. Now we can click on finish, and it has given us an icon on your desktop, on the desktop. But if uh, that goes missing, you can always go start all programs you find runtime software and click to run it from there okay so here's the software itself all right um, you know you got where you can back up and restore and also um, keep in mind this is an important point sometimes you want to make a backup of a drive but what you want to restore is just a single file that you're that's gone missing right so in addition to a full restore which can be done here they have a browse functionality where um, you can browse to the backup that's been created earlier and uh, it'll open up a, a Windows Explorer type uh, interface where you'll see a list of folders and everything and once you're in there uh, basically find the file or the folder that you want uh, you know right click on it and uh, I think the command is uh, uh, extract so you can, you can extract that uh, to a new location outside of the backup and um, get to your data okay so it, so it's great for both full data backup or restore I should say and for um, incremental restores should you need it but let's go ahead and create the backup so we'll click on backup and it'll show you a list of your drives here we're gonna choose drive C it's the only drive typically drive C is your system drive on a Windows machine if you do have more than one drive you can uh, shift to select or, or control select uh, more than one drive um, and back up more than one drive at once but in this case we just have the one so we'll select that and click on next the uh, backup wizard comes on we can confirms the drive choice right it'll click next and here's uh, an area that you really really have to pay special attention to by default strangely enough um, it wants to back up onto the drive you're backing up. It wants to put the backup into your My Documents folder, which is probably about the most inappropriate place to put a backup, but um, nevertheless, uh, what you need to do is hopefully have a either a, a network uh, drive that you can save to, or one of those USB drives that you can, you know, external USB drives that you can plug in becomes a new drive letter, and you click on the little uh, folder on the right here you know expand my computer and here is uh, the network drive that I want to save to so we'll select that and what you can also do to uh, keep things clean once you've selected the drive click on make a new folder okay and a new folder will appear and you can right click on that folder and choose rename and then say uh, drive image backup Right, hit enter. Make sure you've got that finally selected, that new name. Click on the new name and to select it. Click OK. And we'll see here, uh, you know, drive Z, drive image backup. That's the folder that it's going to go. 
Now here, this is the file name uh, which will be created. Um, that's going to be the name of your backup drive. So you can change that if you like, but um, no, no, no real reason to. So once you've chosen your path, uh, quite simply click Next, right? And uh, the backup will be in progress. Now keep in mind that um, the way the software works is it tries to, first of all, lock the drive, right? So nothing else can access it. So, you know, because it doesn't want, um, you know, activity on the drive while the backup is being made. Uh, it wants to sort of get a frozen image in, a, in place and time of exactly a single state of the drive and back that up. Now, if it can't lock it, then it tries to create a shadow. And what a shadow essentially means is, um, I guess the uh, best way to explain it would be it becomes an agreement between the software and the operating system. The operating system from that point forward is going to keep track of any changes uh, that may be going on uh, outside of this backup process. You know, if I started a Word document or whatever, and it won't present those changes to the backup software. Essentially, the operating system is now going to give this software that frozen um, place in time, you know, all these files exactly as they were at the moment that the backup started and uh, th that will save you from, you know, bizarre corruptions and everything later. So uh, the the essential message is here, it will or may stick on 0% for quite a while, okay? It could be could be 5 minutes, could be 10 minutes, whatever. Don't panic that it's not going anywhere. Uh, try to be patient and um, let it uh, do its negotiations with the operating system. Um, in my experience, in almost every case, it does move forward, so give it a chance to do so. All right, and similarly, right near the end, when it hits 100%, there's a bunch of, um, I, don't know, I don't know if you want to call it cleanup, or anyway, uh, there's a bit more organization that has to be done. Um, it may be indexing, whatever it is, but once it hits 100%, it's not actually necessarily officially done. What you want to wait for is for this finish button here to light up so that it's active, so that you can actually click on it and say finish. You understand it's finished. And generally, you'll also have in this log area here, uh, in the lower left, it will say um, it'll say that it's done. Okay. So uh, the timing is a little bit weird at the beginning and a bit weird at the end. But uh, this is a good rock solid way to make a backup. All right. So um, the backups, of course, can take uh, varying lengths of time. Once they do get started, um, sometimes uh, I've seen them finish in half an hour on a nice fast system. Uh, it can take you know five or six hours on a slower system. A lot, of course, depends on how much data there is, and. Uh, the available throughput between you know the drive being backed up and the drive that's being sent to you know how fast is your network how fast can you send over that USB cable etc right so um, let it run let it finish its its deal and you'll have an exact image of your drive that contains everything you know the icons in your desktop the software that's installed all of your preferences uh, you know whatever data you happen to be sitting on the drive at the time etc etc if you had a catastrophic drive failure uh, th this is a great way to get everything back you know buy a buy a new hard drive on another machine take that back up uh, restore it to the new drive plug the new drive into your old computer and uh, everything should be fine okay and that's the end of this uh, tutorial